So I'm the girl with the plan, and for as long as I can remember, I've always been wired this way. When it comes to my career, life, even situational, at a minimum, I have to know the who, what, where, when, why, what now, what next, what if. <laughs> Although I know it's next to impossible to know what goes on around me at all times, I still choose to remain aware. And I credit my training as an Air Force and Security Forces member for increasing my vigilance. For example, I sit near exits, and within a minute of walking into an establishment, I have an escape plan. You just never know these days. Now, with that being said, if anything were to happen out of our control, you can follow me one of seven ways. It's your choice. <laughs> in the early spring of 2010, I was in northern Texas carrying out my plan to become an Air Force medic. I decided to study in town at a cafe inside of a local bookstore. In walks Ross Muehlberger with a 12-gauge shotgun. And no, I didn't see him coming. He approached my study table near the exit and stated, hey, nigger, it's Hitler's birthday. Before I could even respond or process his statement, he opened fire, and all hell broke loose. I remember running and tripping over tables and chairs, people, even my own two feet. I was frantic. It wasn't until a shot grazed the left side of my face that I realized that I was not reacting according to my plan or my training. You see, he was there for me, for us. I was not going to make it out alive. And that's when I initiated a plan that I hoped I'd never have to implement. The plan was that if I ever found myself in a situation where I was unable to defend myself, I'd play dead. So I grabbed my face dramatically and hit the floor. And there I lay, my arms and legs laying out in every direction, not breathing, blinking, perfectly still, lifeless ready to be stepped over and forgotten. I remember thinking to myself, so this is what happens in a mass shooting. This is how I'm going to die. In the midst of the chaos, I did everything right according to my plan. But he shot me again. And although the pain was beyond anything I've ever imagined or I've ever experienced, I remained perfectly still, despite the blast, who focused on executing my plan. The shooter left and took the life of a young man before ultimately taking his own. But I lay there lifeless. I didn't cry, beg, or plead. Because for all he knew, for all anyone knew, I was dead. My recovery began that night mentally. It was on that cafe floor where I decided I was going to give back to what led me there that night. I would become an Air Force medic. My injuries are extensive, but I consider them a minor deviation from my plan. The blast was at close range, shattering my tibia and patella in my right leg and sending pellets across both of my lower limbs. My surgeons were honest. I wouldn't walk for months, and I'd never run again. And my Air Force career was questionable. But although the can'ts and the don'ts were endless, I never allowed my mind and my body to agree. You see, when one is given up, the other is always there to pick it up. My family and Air Force family never allow me to lose hope. You see, I walked two months before my doctor suggested. Now, if you ask my mom, it's plain on stubbornness. But me, it was determination. And with a kick in the butt from my brother, I was diagnosed with PTSD and underwent both therapy and retail therapy, which can be pretty expensive, trust me. <laughs> yeah. But most importantly, I accepted what happened to me that night, and I chose to forgive. And I urged the family of my attacker to know that I did not blame them for their loved ones' actions that night. Now, resilience is a state of mind, and it's even a skill that I have to work at every day of my life. I cannot change what happened that night, but I am in control of my reaction. Yes, I'm in pain every day of my life, but I'm alive. And if you want to know, I'm sure you want to know, am I angry? I am very angry. But only because that young man did not get the help that he needed. I'm a survivor. There is no reason for me to feel victimized. And no, I can't run a marathon, but I can walk for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society in support of my mother, who's in remission from cancer.
But last but not least, after five surgeries and painful rehabilitation, I returned to training a year later in 2011. And I stand before you not only as a survivor, but also as a proud Air Force medic. Thank you. So, I am still the girl with the plan, rolling with the punches, taking it day by day. I had every reason to give up from that cafe floor to this, sta this stage today and beyond. I'll continue to bounce back and persevere, and 10 years from now, there will be so many more positive and significant events to top the one that led me here today. Oprah Winfrey once said, those who survive in life do it by hammering at it one day at a time. You do what you have to do to get you through today, and that puts you in the best place for tomorrow. And that's the truth that I live by today. Thank you.